Hey everyone, it seems that things might be getting back to normal. The biggest story this week seems to be the incident in Glasgow, and a stabbing in Glasgow somehow making the front page news. Maybe I've lost touch with the modern world. There was also another terrorism-related story in which Leeds United had to remove a photograph of Osama Bin Laden that they'd discovered in New Ellen Road Stadium. And quite right too, everyone knows that Bin Laden supported Bradford, or was it Rotherham? Nonetheless, in America, things are still going on as they ever were, and it seems that the constant woke outrage might just become another strange part of modern life that everyone finds weird, like checkbooks or pickup trucks or finding James Corden to be a hilarious raconteur who definitely deserves more money and exposure. You know, I recently saw a harrowing documentary about the asbestos industry, and yet it was still more entertaining than that late-night show where James drives around singing in a car like he's on a Hindu. One story from the States this week was about Bubba Wallace, who's a NASCAR driver. NASCAR, for those unaware of it, is the name of the motorsport where cars drive around and around in a big circle for several hours, presumably invented when someone realised they'd forgotten to buy the bit of land in the middle of their race course. It's a high money stakes version of watching the cars driving around Marble Arch. But this week there was excitement for once after a decision was made to ban Confederate flags from the events, and then the driver, Bubba Wallace, discovered a noose hanging in his garage. The FBI were sent in to investigate the supposed hate crime, and their detective work revealed that the noose was in fact just a small rope supposed to help lower the garage door once he'd done driving his car, leading some to speculate what else he could find a fence with next. Perhaps he'll see some of those conical paper cups next to the water cooler and mistake them for white hoods. Maybe he'll sue the manufacturer of his car's tyres for assuming that he wanted them in black. Personally speaking, I just don't understand why I couldn't get one of the sponsors to buy him one of the automatic things. You know, the things that come with a button on your keychain. They sell them in B&Q these days, I think. Moving on, you know, last week I joked about the English national anthem being banned, but this week saw some especially attention-seeking folk in America claiming that the US national anthem is racist and should be banned. You know, it's a position so unpopular and preposterous that it makes you wonder if it's for real or not, or whether it's an idea being put out there by people to undermine support in that movement. You know, I'd like to know how many people in the survey that they claimed actually were just especially jingoistic British tourists who think that the anthem should be banned because they want it swapped back to the one about praying for Her Majesty's good health. You know, I wonder which of the songs Prince Harry is a fan of in California. You know, the funny thing is with the anthems that they never actually got rid of God Save the Queen in America. Go look up the song My Country Tis of Thee. It's the same tune but with new lyrics. They play it when they're swearing in new presidents, but I probably wouldn't recommend singing the British version if you ever find yourself in DC when they're doing that. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.